welcome back guys. Today we're working on the 2021 Honda Goldwing DCT Tour. We're performing the 4,000 mile oil change. We're coming up on that maintenance interval. Okay, so if we refer to the Honda owner's manual, we will see that the first interval for oil replacement is at 4,000 miles. So this is the break-in period for a brand new bike. Your first time you change the oil is 4,000 miles. And in that interval, we're gonna replace the oil filter, the engine oil, and the clutch oil filter. And if you notice here as well, we don't have to change the oil again until 12,000 miles. Now it also has a note for a regular replace there to do it every, once a year, which I would definitely do anyway. I uh, change my oil every year, beginning of every season. But that's, that's pretty interesting. And I felt like it speaks to the reliability of Honda. Okay, so what material will we need for this job? We're gonna need, almost, we'll need five quarts of GN4, 10 weight, 30. And that's mineral oil that Honda recommends. Um, and I'm just going with the recommended oil there. It's actually 4.9 quarts, I think is what the fill is. So we have the oil. I also have a um, oil filter canister wrench because as you will see, the housing around where the main oil filter is, it's kind of hard to get to. So I picked up one of those to make the job easier. And I decided to go with the high flow filter set on this one. I've used high flow in several motorcycles, dirt bikes, sports bikes. It never had an issue. I really like to use their filters. Plus the filter that I'm putting in, it has a little uh, socket end on the end of it to make it easier to remove later. As far as tools, we just need a basic ratchet. Uh, it's a 12 millimeter socket for the drain plugs and it's an eight millimeter socket for the transmission filter housing, which will show that. I was able to get some uh, vinyl gloves. I'll be using those. I got those from the uh, proctologist this week. So hopefully uh, they perform pretty well in greasy places. So they should work for this job as well. And I also wanted to add in that I did get the crush washers, as you can see here. So typically I reuse crush washers in oil changes, but since I was at the dealership, I told them to go ahead and give me a set. So there's, there's three drain plugs in this job and I picked up all three crush washers. Okay, now that we're up underneath the bike, we'll be able to see one, two, three. So three drain plugs we have to pull out. This is the canister location or the transmission filter location. Those are eight millimeter and these are 12 millimeter. Okay, and I also wanted to show where the oil filter sets and why I purchased a wrench. So some people say they can get a standard filter wrench in there, um, but I'll tell you this, this is a metal one, this, this old filter wrench that I have on. But see, that makes it, that'll make it real easy to remove that guy, no problem. All right, so this smaller pan, that's way better. And I'm hoping that's enough to catch five quarts of oil, should be. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to show me extracting, because it's I don't have a cameraman today, so we'll see how this works out. All right, so this is the 12 millimeter. I'll go ahead and take the drain plugs out. Okay, so I've got all three drain plugs out, like I showed. And I do apologize for the folks at home who wanted to see the uh, exciting part of breaking those loose and the initial oil dump. 
that I could not get. I just couldn't do it, you know, without a camera guy. I don't right now. I don't have anything to set up this low to the ground. So uh, there you go. That's a lot of Honda oil right there. So I still need to remove the uh, filter, the oil filter, and then also the clutch filter, which is back in there. Try not to get oil splatter on my camera. So, but anyway, yeah. And just to note, um, it was those were not very tight in there. I think it's 22 foot pounds of torque supposed to be on those drain plugs, but they just snapped right loose. And maybe that's the whole uh, crush washer thing that you know, makes that easier. You know, these are, this is an aluminum crankcase in there, so you don't want to crank that thing down. Um, and I won't be using a torque wrench today. I, I just use feel, you know, and I'm careful about that. I've done enough jobs that kind of have a sense um so but anyway here we go phase one is done the old oil is out hey, just one more point of explanation before i put the old uh, procto gloves back on i have to set my camera down uh, that is a crush washer so uh, most people probably know this but the uh this this little washer that's on the drain plug so in, like I say, in most cases I reuse those, but basically what happens is when you uh, torque it down, you know, they, they crush and spread out and help seal, you know, to kind of help prevent leaks and stuff. But yeah, the, the uh, little silver O-ring on there that you can see, that's the crush washer. All right, and once again, uh, I am installing a high flow filter HF204 which based on their website that's a suitable substitute for this application so this is the guy that's going in there and as you can see she's got that little nut on the end of it so even though I do have the tool now over there which that made that, that I haven't done it yet but I'm sure that's gonna make that way easy but uh, yeah so I'd like to have that little convenience for next time. Okay, and to give everyone an idea of what the clutch filter looks like, it's a little guy like this. So this uh, will go up inside, just like that. And uh, when I pull the, the cover off, there's a spring that goes up inside here and it just sits into place. It sits up inside the bike. Um, so this helps filter the oil that's inside the DCT clutch. So, and uh, that is the suitable sub per the website, HF117. So that's the guy that's going in. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, I just had to bring the camera back up to say if it wasn't for this tool that I purchased, there's no way I would have got that this oil filter loose. See, it's loose now. See that? Um, I don't know what animal put that oil filter on, uh, but that thing was was on super tight. Um, and anyone who's you know done oil changes or worked on vehicles and things you know that uh, oil filters should be hand tight, right? So even though I'm putting one on here, it's got a nut, I'm just gonna snug it up, you know, just a little bit beyond, you know, once it makes contact with the frame. Um, that was unbelievable, guys. There's no way I would have got that loose with any kind of oil wrench in here. And as I've showed before, I can't really show it now with the oil in there, but you know, the, the filter is right up against the housing, like on the other side. So to get a belt around this thing, and I think if you buy this kit from Honda, the filter, there's a part number that comes with a metal a metal wrench like this. And I tell you, in Japan, they must have used like an impact wrench or something <laughs> to put this thing on. Um, so that that was pretty that was that was pretty uh, shocking how tight that was. So anyway, I'm glad I bought the tool for the job. Back to it. 
Well, since I do have one hand ungloved right now, I guess I can go ahead and uh, capture this part of it. Maybe. With my oily, oily latex glove. So I uh, poured out the initial oil dump just because it almost filled this container up to the brim. And, uh, So there you go, there's a little live action for you guys. All right. Let that drain out and I'll uh, grab the other filter. All right guys, I'm gonna see if I can install the new high flow filter. HF204 RC, one-handed. Sorry for the jarring of the camera here so you can see that guy right up in there easy cheesy lemon squeezy all right and I had a, had a, a defect in my uh, latex glove so he ended up coming off that's some oils getting through um, so there we go, the oil, fil oil filter's in. You can see it through the exhaust header right there. And now it's time to go tackle that guy. Gotta get him off. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so to get this cover out, that guy right there, this takes, uh, I'm trying not to stick my camera in my oil pan. Just like that. See, and there's two, and then I'll pull out the other filter. All right, so we got that guy out. So there he is. And I had to uh, use the old finger technique to get that thing out of there. It was stuck up in there, and uh, it was just, it's kind of like a suction sound. This did not want to come out. As you can see, I'm going to drip, try to get any excess oil out of there, but as you can see the the orifice, whoop, see, just like that. <laughs> trying to get my camera. So uh, now we'll go ahead and install the other filter. All right, so those are the two retaining bolts that's holding this cap over top of where this filter is going to go. And uh, we're going to inspect that little rubber grommet around that thing, a little gasket. That spring goes up in here to hold this into place. And as you can see, it sits into that cap right there. So, see if I can yeah, shot of this guy. So you just see this goes right up in there. And that's basically what I had to do is put my finger in this hole and rock it back and forth until it popped loose. So uh, as you can see, it just sits right up in there. And that's the clutch filter. All right, I gotta put the, uh, the cover back on. All right, guys. So now we've got the old, new old filter in. And this was a 17 millimeter, by the way. I've got one. Two, let's see that guy, where you at, there he is, three. So three old plugs are back in, crush washer's in. You got the, the uh, clutch filter cover put back on. Eight millimeter screws going back in. So, and just a note about torque, again, I, and I was just thinking about this as I was putting it back in, but like I said, I'm not using a torque wrench, but when I take it out, it gives me a real, real sense of how snug this needs to be. And really all you're doing is kind of bottoming these out, you know, and then maybe another quarter turn beyond that. I'm not sure how long this has taken me, you know, first time and all, but uh, I'm definitely slower, more methodic. I'm paying attention. You know, this is my bike. This, this is my baby. So that's why uh, I choose to do this kind of maintenance myself. 
here in the garage. So, um, but in any case, the uh, dirty work's done and I just need to clean up. We'll pour some more di dinosaurs back in. So, uh, let's do it. Okay, so this is my favorite part of doing this type of maintenance and that's putting the fresh oil back in. So we will use this opening which appears to be the right one. Let's see if you guys can see that or not. It looks like oil to me, those letters. So I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna pour the oil in that one and see uh, if we get good results. Okay, and like I said, I'm using the uh, Honda recommended GN4, SAE 10 weight 30. This is what the bike calls for. It calls for 4.9 quarts. So I'm going to start with four quarts here and go ahead and pour that in first. All right, so I'm going to uh, use my special purpose funnel here that I like to use for motorcycles. And that fits right in there. And then we'll go ahead and crack open the GN4. So let's get the uh, the first four quarts back in. All right, four quarts are in. Okay, so the feel is four point four point nine. So uh, one quart is 946 milliliters. So one tenth of that is about 94 milliliters, which tells me I need to retain about 100 milliliters. Right around below there. I don't know if uh, my gold wing will be upset if it's a little less or more, uh, but that's the goal. So I'm going to leave. Not this much oil left. Let's do it. guys so that concludes our 4,000 mile oil change on the 2021 Honda Gold Wing DCT Tour wasn't that bad I've definitely had more difficult uh, motorcycles to change the oil on and uh, vehicles as well so pretty excited about it that was my first time it went really smooth everything came apart really well and fit back together and now I'm excited to get back on the road we'll see you there